Hi there, Jamie here from Impeccable Indigos, and this is Othello, a year and a half old 2021 male, and he's a pretty chill snake, as you can see here. He's been out for a little while now, and he's kind of settled down. And uh, I want to talk today about the comparisons between Drymarchon in general, indigo snakes in particular, and king cobras. It's a comparison that you often find made among indigo keepers, uh, that eastern indigos are sort of the king cobras of the colubrids, of the non-venomous snakes. And why is that? And I think it's an interesting discussion and an interesting comparison to make. The big difference, of course, first and foremost, is that king cobras are venomous. They are the largest venomous species in the world, known to get supposedly to 18 feet. They don't usually get that long, but 12 feet is not unusual for 12, 14 feet in the wild. Eastern indigos are the largest North American native species. Males can get to eight and a half feet. And the close relatives of Kribos can get even a bit larger, over nine feet. So that venom is a key difference. But other than that, there are many similarities. Eastern indigos in the wild feed on any kind of vertebrate they can catch. They're sort of generalists in a way, but their number one food item, studies show, is snakes. And that's because, among other things, it's easier for them to ingest a larger meal with a snake because of that shape, because indigos can't stretch and take those really large meals that um, constrictors often take. So indigos are snake eaters, and king cobras are almost exclusively snake eaters in the wild. Their Latin name, Ophiophagus hanna, Ophiophagus means snake eater and they feed almost entirely on snakes. So that's one similarity right off the bat. Also, if you take a close look at the heads of king cobras and dry mark on in general, and it goes in particular, you see these very large scales, much larger than most other species. If you look at a rat snake or a king snake of a similar size, the scalation is much smaller. It's one of the reasons that their heads look so dramatic it's because of those big scales. King cobras have that as well. And I don't think we have a clear reason as to why that is, at least at present. We also know that Eastern Indigos in general, Drymarca, uh, is Eastern Indigos in particular, Drymarca in general, are particularly intelligent snakes, and clearly so are king cobras. There is plenty of anecdotal evidence that Eastern indigos and king cobras are, may well be the two most intelligent snake species we know, but that evidence is anecdotal. We can't, we don't have much tight evidence yet that's explicit to that. And I would generally throw reticulated pythons in there as well. They are definitely intelligent. They're also very interestingly, not particularly aggressive. You can catch an e indigo in the wild. Now, an eastern indigo, you're not allowed legally to even touch. But any indigo species, you grab them in the wild, and almost invariably, they will not bite. They might musk on you as a defensive maneuver or something like that. They might huff up uh, a little, but they don't bite. And they're amongst the most tractable and tame, passive snakes we can could ever keep in captivity. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that even though king cobras are big and venomous, they are not particularly aggressive. And people who study them in the wild will tell stories of, of being right around them, close up to them, and they generally will only stand up, rear up, and hood up as a warning, uh, of course, which is what that's for, just like a rattlesnake's rattle is for. It's a warning. Venomous snakes don't want to waste their venom in a battle because they need it. It's precious for them for getting food. But the other thing is, is that king cobras generally will not look to bite. They will not look to aggressively attack. They would prefer to retreat. And skilled handlers, people who 
capture King Cobras, to move them away from villages, and, and something that also, there's lots of evidence that kings are not particularly prone to attacking. And people who keep King Cobras in captivity will report that they have similar behaviors to Eastern Indigos. They learn their keepers. They learn very quickly if a person is not a threat, they tend not to be aggressive. There are also people who freehandle them. I don't think that's wise. I don't think that's a good advertisement for the hobby, but nevertheless, they are clearly out there. And the behavior of those freehandled King Cobras is very much like Indigos. Unless they are given a reason to become aggressive, they're not aggressive. When an Eastern Indigo, when an Indigo is threatened, all the dry mark on, they will sort of pick up their heads and they'll huff up their neck to look bigger and more dangerous, something like a King Cobra. And King Cobra's hoods are not as big as the true Cobras. They're not true Cobras. True Cobras like the Naja Naja, Spectacle Cobra, Monocle Cobra, um, the hood is much wider. Um, but they are specially evolved, their ribs to, and the skin to be able to make that threat display. The real question to me is why is that? Why is this snake so disinclined? to be aggressive? Why is a King Cobra so disinclined to be aggressive? And my theory, and it's only a theory, it's only speculation, is that because in their natural range, once they reach adulthood, they have almost no natural enemies. They have a few predatory birds in particular, maybe big cats. Of course, humans are always a threat. But they have very few, once they reach a certain size, they have very few natural predators. And that's the same thing with King Cobras. They are the top predators in their territories with virtually no natural enemies. And I think the fact of that gives these snakes a kind of confidence, a kind of calmness. Whereas hatchling indigos are really nervous. They rattle their, their tails and, they, and they'll and they even strike aggressively. Um, they're really nervous and afraid because there's a lot of things out there that will eat them. But at about a year old or so, they cross that line, the switch gets thrown and they turn, they become true indigos. And they're confident and they're curious and they're interested in new things, but they're not afraid. They're chill, they're comfortable. And I think interestingly enough, the fact that these animals, that Eastern Indigos and King Cobras are both top predators in their respective native habitats is what renders them so non-aggressive. Well, maybe there's a lesson there. Well, this is Othello, my little King Cobra of the non-venomous world. Uh, saying thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Please comment, ask questions, tell us what you'd like to see in the future, and thanks for watching.